Meet Dr. George Church, scientist, entrepreneur, and human guinea pig. Dr. Church is one of the smartest people on the planet, a folk hero of synthetic biology, leading the worldwide push to make the human genome as accessible as a personal computer. You may have seen him on late night TV talking about bringing the woolly mammoth back from extinction, or read about how Duke flunked him for spending too much time in the lab, but later gave him an honorary doctorate for his success at Harvard. His best-selling book, Regenesis, outlines his vision for increasing longevity and eradicating disease through gene editing. Dr. Church has accomplished all of this despite, and possibly because of, having to live with dyslexia and narcolepsy. There are many times in my life, especially when I was young, where I would say, I can't believe that they're paying me to do this. Dr. Church began collecting dragonfly nymphs from the salt marsh behind his childhood home near Tampa, and later built his own computers from surplus electronic parts. He combined these twin obsessions with an intense curiosity and a neurodiverse worldview to forge his own career path as a benevolent mad scientist, eventually focusing his efforts on editing the human genome with an eye toward correcting some of nature's crueler typos. I liked uh, almost everything I studied. Uh, and so I, did, I, did, I didn't want to leave any of them behind. You know, it's like kid not wanting to leave his toys these outgrown. And, and so I was constantly looking for something that demanded, you know, it wasn't just, just me uh, indulging myself, that actually I wanted something, a project that would require all these as different uh, disciplines. And it was uh, crystallography. So I, I, I got introduced that my second year in college, which turned out to be my last year in college as well. And it required math and computer science just to do the Fourier transforms that required uh, you know, physics to understand diffraction and and then chemistry and biology because I was doing it in a crystallography on biomedical molecules like uh, RNAs and uh, and so and I just loved having to do all these things and I think a lot of other people felt that it was a, a nuisance because it, it would slow down your career because you'd have to learn all that, you know, getting a double major or, you know, that sort of thing. It just, just would slow you down. So, uh, but I, I, I was addicted to it. Church has struggled with dyslexia since childhood, but learned to work around it through independent study and by memorizing pictures. It wasn't impossible to read. It just was so difficult uh, that I would, I don't know, you could call it laziness or you could just, just say I, I just did what I could. Narcolepsy has forced him to adopt a shark-like lifestyle of perpetual motion. Since I'm basically unemployable except for uh, the little bit of creativity I have, um, I, you know, I just didn't want to take chances with it. He became enamored with augmented humans when he saw Walt Disney's animatrons at the 1964 World's Fair. When I went back to Florida, I realized that, you know, I could, I had no exposure to science or engineering at all, other than that brief experience in New York. And, uh, and I just sort of felt like it has, it has to be out here somewhere. It has to be, and I just kept looking. And, and so I eventually just, said, well, if I can't find it, I gotta recreate it. That dream took a leap toward reality when he stumbled upon one of the world's first networked computer stations in his high school basement. I didn't know any better. I was just looking through the disk drives and I'd find other people's programs and I would try to figure out what they did. Uh, and I would reverse, you know, I would like run them and I would change them and then see what, hap what happened. And, and that was basically genetics in a way, is you make a mutation, you see what it does. Despite his success, or maybe because of it, Church still has a soft spot for that lonely dyslexic kid in Tampa trying to solve the mystery of the disappearing nymph. It, if I had any regrets, it was not taking enough chances. It seems like I took a lot of chances, um, and uh, but I think I would have encouraged my younger self to be a little more confident. And to parents who might be worried their neurodiverse child is lost in their own world, he says. Just get help, you know, get, you know, it's, you know, be part of a community. And one thing that's really nice about the internet world for parents is that it used to be you would be the only person with this burden, but on the inner or, or this opportunity, depending on how you look at it. Um, but on the internet, you can find other parents that have uh, come up with very clever solutions. For a world of difference, I'm Brad Kuhn.